Hello, don't adjust your sets, it is me. I'm back. Helltech V3. Wow, look at that little guy. Now a lot of you will have seen these, he's been around for a few years now, but as you'll know, unless you've been living under a rock, Andy Kirby and Lewis have um, started quite a thing, particularly Andy Kirby, with the renaissance of the mesh-tastic units in the UK, particularly in certain areas. I think around Manchester, Lewis was saying there's lots of nodes now popping up. For those of you that don't know, I'm sure most of you do, but quickly, these little nodes are very, very cheap. These are about £20 each. When made into a little device, will enable you to uh, message other people across an off-grid network. So you can connect to this via Bluetooth with your phone and send essentially text messages off over the air through to other people. And the way this works is that it's done on a mesh. So one unit will go to the next one, it'll ping the message to the next one and so on. There's plenty of videos on how it works. And Lewis has done a fantastic video on that, uh, sort of a beginner's guide to mesh-tastic. But I thought I would just show you a few things that I have found with it, um, a few things which you might find interesting. Um, now I'll show you quickly. I, as you know, I like designing things. I've, I've put, I've designed a very simple little enclosure for some of mine. Here we go. Here it is. And if anyone wants to make one of these, I'll pop the STL files uh, uh, online at some point, um, so you can knock one of these up. Now, um, the, these that give you an option for a battery to go inside. The little batteries uh, you can pop in a, a little one of the little slim lithium batteries in the, inside it, and then the unit goes in the top. I'll show you one that's. Um, got some power on it this is one with the antenna built inside it yeah there we go that's obviously flattened i must have had that running off of the battery so there you go nice little unit there off the side of it and it's picked up one of my units in the other room as you can see there and uh, man green and gray so these good little little enclosures and i've also done a another version of this if you want to pop one of these in a loft i've done a version with like that's lighter than that's not quite as robust because it's only it's got to be bottled on the wall and it's got like little built-in feet so again i'll pop the stl files for these there's loads and loads of people making cases for these at the minute so but i'll just if anyone's interested you're welcome to have have the designs you can sell them if you want i don't care and do what you want with them i'd rather um there's lots of people in this hobby at the moment trying to make a quick buck on it i'm not interested in doing that i want to rather i'd rather get a mesh network set up and spread and get it working because this is great i mean if you look at the way the world is now having a totally off-grid messaging system that they can't shut down or control i find that rather an attractive proposition but Anyway, I thought I would show you something to look out for. A lot of the kits, when you buy these little Heltec units, will come with a cheap antenna. Now, these ones, little right-angled antennas, are absolutely okay. And the way that you can establish whether these antennas are okay or not uh, is by using a Nano VNA. This is a Nano VNA, which is a little antenna uh, analyzer. Now, loads of videos on how you set these up. I'm not going to go through that. There's a simple set procedure for how you set this up for this frequency. There's lots of people that have done it online. So if you have a look, you can see because you need to actually calibrate these before you can do a simple test like this. Well, this is this is a great way of testing if your antenna is any good. Now, I'm just going to power this on. And this is set so it should come on. And look at that. It's absolutely it's so it's so bad the SWR is off the scale. Let me just let me just take that off and put you on one of the other little antennas. And that's what we should be looking at, guys. You see the difference? <laughs> now if we move this little jog wheel down, we should be able to drop. This is SWR we're looking at here, the SWR of this antenna. And this is me holding it in my hand. So if we get it round to about the 866, 867 mark there, it's 1 to 1.5. And you see it's varying as I'm turning it, but you see how important it is to test your antenna. Because a lot of people would have bought the kits, popped these little antennas on, and had absolutely no joy with it at all. And that is the reason. Some of these these antennas you might as well bin and there are other options obviously they the, the units come let me just get you the they come with these little antennas okay which you can fold in the case now these are actually are actually reasonable they actually work really really well and they've got the tiny little ipx connector on now i'll show you another tip i found on some of these um these leads if you're making up your own case and you've got this type of arrangement with the the sma connector um either Try and get this in line with the Nano VNA in your antenna while you're testing to check and make sure there's no problems with this lead. 
Um, to do that, you would need an SMA to IPX connector to connect that up to get it to go in, to, in line with the Nano VNA. If you don't want to do that, just do a simple basic check with a, a digital voltmeter. Just check that your positive goes to your positive and there's no shorts between the two because on some of these cheap leads, I've seen dead shorts. Another thing to mention, if you have the Heltec, if you have one of these boards, this is just an example with the Heltec, you must always have an antenna on it, okay? You must always have a load on it because you can damage these units very easily if you don't. And you certainly will if you plugged into one of these and plug this in, as you've seen, it, it just, I mean, I, I've actually widened the scope of the Nano VNA to see what frequency it was, uh, it was resonant on and I couldn't find one. <laughs> there it is, look. So... I just thought I would put that out there because not I haven't seen it mentioned as such, but it's really worth checking that that out if you're running one of these. And like I say, I've got a whole family of these little guys here now, which I'll show you. So that that's that's the basic module. That's the one that you've just seen with the battery in. That's another version of it and the loft mounted module as well. Now there are other designs. I'll pop one up on the screen which I quite like. Um, I've just downloaded the files for this one. So I'm going to print that one out. I've just got some more PLA in to do that. And the other thing I was going to show you was if you're putting a device in the loft. Now got to be careful with this one because this is electrical and obviously you're not strictly supposed to do this but if you are powering one in the loft and you don't want to run a USB cable up into the loft to power the device because you can power it directly via USB or via the power connection on the bottom and the actual the, the units come with a little uh, power lead to power them okay um, what I uh, have come up I've come up with a thought was using was one of these very inexpensive lighting transformers this little one amp one here which will let me tap 230 volts off the lighting circuit in the loft and give me 12 volt DC out. But you might then say, well, hang on, these guys are set to run off of five volts. What are you gonna do about that? Well, I'll show you what I'm gonna do about that. Is one of these guys. These are an inexpensive, tiny little buck converter, nice and simple. So we take our 12 volts from this, pop it into the buck converter, and this handily gives us a USB output okay at five volts and it'll do about one amp or one and a half amps something like that and these are really inexpensive i think these were like three pounds or something from amazon um and that means i can just plug a normal usb lead in you've got all the overcurrent protection as well and um i can just power the thing off of usb for as long as it needs so a combination of these in the loft will actually do that for you so wire off your lighting circuit into the uh into the the 12 volt transformer and then power the 12 volt transformer off of that. Now, obviously, it depends on where you live and what country you're in, you might want to get an electrician to do this for you. Um, and certainly you would need an electrician to sign off if you're in the UK for the regs and stuff. But in other countries, that's not the case. So, um, you know, you obviously you have to look at that if you're planning on doing such a thing. And obviously you can run a USB cable right up into the loft, but in certain instances, say I want to pop this up my mum's, she wouldn't be happy about a USB cable going up the wall into the loft. So I just thought I would show you that as an option. Now on the antenna front, what I will show you, if you're really serious, there are a couple of things that you can do. Now I would recommend getting an antenna like this if you want a half decent node somewhere this has got the a foldable joint in the actual base of the antenna there although with some of these cheaper antennas i would avoid folding it if you can on some of these i can show you this on the nano vna let me just clear a space however you can buy one of these uh, online uh, and it will look ostensibly and they'll say it's for 868 megahertz but when you actually uh, connect it up you can see there from the trace this is this is actually a 950 meg antenna you can see this is way way off so what i would say is be really really careful about ebay sellers amazon sellers um, selling these antennas um, what i would do is, is stick with a name brand uh, or if you can find off of the mesh tastic um, wiki or the site uh, for recommended antennas then I would definitely look at that because it, it can make all the difference you could spend uh, all this money on the node and the batteries of doing two or three of these and fit them all with this type of antenna and have absolutely no luck at all because the antenna is basically just like a, uh, a wet a wet stick it's just nothing um, so that is what I was uh, mainly making this video for because a few people had um, 
uh, myself had, had been having poor performance and didn't quite realize uh, what was going on until I actually checked all these antennas and bits out. So the best thing you can do is when you buy your Nano V&A, particularly if you're buying them from AliExpress, buy it, sorry, if you're buying a, um, an, a mesh tech node or something similar, buy the Nano V&A at the same time. These are really inexpensive. You can get them for 30 quid off of uh, AliExpress and you can set up a configuration for your antennas and it just loads in, uh, it will load in as it does here. As soon as you power it on, I have this set up. So it loads in the setting for those antennas as it comes on. There is a procedure you have to do for calibration, but like I say, I'm not gonna go through that on this video. So that's really what I wanted to say about this was that the don't, you know, you, you could don't sort of buy one of these and then get disappointed because you might find it's actually your absolutely terrible antenna that is the problem. Now, what I did to get around this, which I'll show you, is a bit of fun, is I made a Yagi. <laughs> uh, again, if anyone wants the STL files for this, they, they can uh, uh, contact me and I'll, I'll give them the dimensions and everything that I use for this. This is basically using stainless steel bicycle spokes trimmed to length and I designed this so I could sit it on uh, one of my other nodes, which I'll just get for you, which is this one. Now, this isn't my design. I found this online, and I rather like the design of this case. It's rather natty. This is on Thingiverse. And I designed this one so the um, antenna clips on the top of the actual unit there, and then you screw the SMA connector into the antenna, and you've got a directional antenna then on top of this device, which you can then, when you're out and about, you can sit it on your car roof and turn it and whatnot, and um, you can uh, use it that way. So this has worked quite well. This is by far uh, the best SWR that I get out, out of any of the um, antennas that I've got, because obviously this was trimmed to length uh, by myself, and um, it does SWR nicely on the Nano v &A. There we go, I've just got it literally hanging off the Nano v &A. Look at that, it's the lowest of all of them. So if you're concerned, or uh, if you've got a bit of practical skills, the way you can get around this antenna problem is literally make your own antenna. <laughs> and this is way more, because uh, it's directional as well, it gives you way more gain, probably about 12 dB gain over any of the other antennas. And uh, this is the one I've had most of the success with uh, when I've been playing around. So... Um, yeah, I thought I would show you that. I thought you might be interested with that. Again, the STL files for this little antenna, very, very simple. Um, the one thing you'll need is a good, if you've got stainless steel bicycle spokes, is a good pair of cutters to cut it to length. And um, all I've done there is just fed, uh, got some old chalky block terminals and cut the plastic away and then just to crimp the wire underneath that connector there just to clamp it to the uh, you could obviously solder it with a hot enough iron but um, I just used what I'd got laying about and as you can see there it works rather nice so I don't think there's anything else I need to cover on this um, I have got a uh, a few modules here one thing i would say is supply of the um Heltec modules is a little bit um uh, tight in the uk although i believe andy is andy kirby is looking at getting a whole batch of these in and selling them onwards uh, so there is a proper uk supplier for these um, but i think it's one of the things when you get into it it's real good fun and um uh, it's very very addictive um, particularly when you you pick up nodes from sort of a certain very long distance away and like I say for me the attraction is to have a completely off-grid messaging system I imagine the UK government are not very happy about it um, uh, for one they obviously like to monitor our comms don't they and, uh, and know what we're on about and saying and um, they also probably would like to be able to shut them down now there really isn't any way that they could shut this down uh, under any under pretty much any circumstances so um, that's rather nice that's rather attractive for some of us and it also on a practical sense and a, you know if you if you are concerned some of the people I know in this in the amateur radio community are, are also in the sort of prepping community as well it's also a good um, it's a good it's a nice system to have in place should uh, certain things hit the fan let's just say and who knows with what's going on in the world right now so anyway if you have been thank you ever so much for watching if you've got any questions please leave them in the comments below i've been a bit lazy on the comments as of late uh, through work reasons uh, the other thing i was going to mention is synad meters i'm getting a lot of requests for those again i've solved over 200 of them and i just was so bit i just didn't have enough time to make any more however i am going to make some more uh, i've built some more boards up um, 
There we go, there's a board. I've built some more boards up for you guys, so I will actually try and get um, maybe five or six made uh, um, in the next couple of weeks. If you are interested in one of these, uh, just drop, drop us a line. I've had quite a lot of emails about them still. If, if anyone does want a sign of me, I am going to make a limited run of a few more and uh, they'll go on my eBay page, which is Noxyman123. So if you want to follow my eBay page for when any of this comes online, uh, you can do that. All right, I'm going to go now. Um, I'm sorry about the massive delay since the last video I did, which was a Christmas ghost video, which didn't have very many views, but I really enjoyed making that video. It was lots and lots of fun. I hope you had a good Christmas, and I hope you're having a happy new year. We'll catch you on the next one. Go and play with some mesh-tastic stuff. I'm going to go and watch the rugby. Take care.